えー、と I'd like to speak in English, if I may. Maybe I'll be switching between English and Japanese. The theme itself is interesting. So,、uh, in the spirit of educating myself, what are the limits of design? Uh, is the question that I pose myself from the architectural point of view. Within the context of architecture, what is the domain of uh, design uh, has long been discussed. For example, light environment、uh, and economic uh, aspects uh, were stressed Uh, by Hugh Ferries, and there were many books about、uh, binoculars. Although they are not being designed,、uh, beautiful, inspirational architects have been designed. So the concept of design was ambiguous to begin with. And、uh, 77, a year before I was born, in Rover. What is design? Exhibition was held in Louvre Museum. and And Charles Eames、uh, made a very interesting ans- answer. Boundaries of problems. Is design a creation of a group? Very often. Is there a design ethic? There are always design constraints, and these often imply an ethic. Is it a method of general expression? No, it is a method of action. So, The concept of design t e n d to expand. We have that、uh, characteristic because it is considered that design would、uh, solve p r o b l e m So when problems expand, the design realm will expand as well. So within our organization, we have OMA and AMO, design and architecture. For example, we design the EU flag being used, as you can see. So, design concept is expanding, as Nanjo san said. And with that, food, travel, realms are included. And、uh, as was、uh, mentioned、uh, by Nanjo san, business is really at the forefront of incorporating design concept. And then there would be economic. Uh, values. The creative economy, as it is called,、uh, is the fast growing industry. And in fact, $630 billion is the money made、uh, each year,、uh, which is an equivalent of the military outlay, defense outlay in the US. So I'm comparing pens, pencils, and the、uh, bullet. And design accounts for 60% of that creative economy. So, design thinking is being used more. And as you know, within、uh, the Stanford University, there is the design and business schools, the D school. And with D school, the consumption of post it exploded, according to some people. So, Post it based brainstorming style is now well established, taking root. And、uh, it is expanding on the city level as well, creative cities,、uh, which means uh, the uh, certification from UNESCO, and already 69 cities are called the creative cities in 2015. As you can see, since 2014, it exploded. In the year 2014,、uh, 28 cities were added. And these curves indicate that in 2025, there will be 751 creative cities. That's a projection, which would mean that we are going to have creative cities all over the world. And I consider this to be a, a, wake, a wake up call,、um, an alarm. I'm sounding an alarm.、Uh, this will just become a matter of formality, is what I'm saying. So, Uh, it would mean that design uh, would uh, be done by anyone. And there is a book for that. 3D printers could be used to share the uh, 3D uh, information 
and uh, create objects. And Kanye West uh, would be a representative uh, case of artists claiming to be design designer to design everything. So they are more belief in design. But at the same time, Philip Stark uh, are now saying design is dead. And uh, ironically, Apple's Johnny Ive is saying that. I don't want to be called a designer, and uh, I don't want you to think phones as design, object of design. So design, which is a cultural thing, is being sold to the cities. Uh, some, there are some professions who are trying to transplant this idea into cities. Uh, for example, uh, Gail Lord uh, has uh, written a manual uh, as to how you create this. And then there will be copies and copies of these manuals. Uh, it's uh, like cookie cutter uh, type of uh, uh, cultural cities all over the world, mushrooming all over the world, making the world more homogeneous. And uh, art is an industry which I think is uh, representative of this. Uh, Bilbao Guggenheim was uh, built, and the Bilbao effect took place. All of the administrations uh, in the world asked for the emulation of this. But with uh, the economic downturn, this became difficult. And my personal uh, proposition is that art fairs and uh, Biennale are now becoming the in thing amongst the public sector. Uh, to replace uh, the uh, Bilbao type of uh, architects. Uh, there are so many uh, biennales being uh, taking place. For example, in uh, September of 2014, there were over 20 of such fairs being he held. So again, the art events uh, are now becoming formative, uh, cookie cutter. Uh, everything looks so much the same similar. So it's very difficult to differentiate yourself. So what happens to cities in this context? Again, my personal proposition, Tokyo. Uh, it's a big city, and therefore different sub-centers had their own characteristics. So to use a food analogy, it was like you had many different uh, uh, dishes on the table, and you shared that, whereas today, uh, you have these predefined programs for large-scale developments being used all over the world. And Roppongi Hills was the first, but we see similar skyscrapers all over the world, which would mean that uh, instead of being a a la carte type of dinner, we now have a bento box type of situation, prepackaged, and there are um, uh, rules of thumbs that will give you better predictive pre predictability. So it's not a la carte dinner anymore. It's bento box dinner. I'm not criticizing bento, by the way. So this is what's happening, like cookie cutter. Everything looks the same, and yet you need to differentiate yourself, which makes the job for architects more challenging. This is happening not only in Tokyo, but all over the world. So what are we trying to do as architects? Uh, this is uh, Santa Monica in LA, the commercial district development, mixed use commercial development. Uh, the hotel, commercial, uh, residential, office spaces. LA has uh, great weather. You almost need no air conditioning throughout the year. And therefore, exterior and uh, interior, would it, we wanted to c have connectivity there. So it's a staircase type of buildings. Uh, each building has its own plaza. So. With this type of situation being in existence of today, as Nanjosan said, I became interested in food because there are the so-called three majors of the uh, human's life, uh, closing food and uh, houses. Only food is uh, 
staying away from globalization, uh, clothes and uh, architecture are the same all over the world. Food is universal, but at the same time, it's very highly diverse, and also terroir uh, localities are very much emphasized in food. So uh, coexisting with the, the, those elements uh, seem to be very nice to me. So I wanted to learn from it, from food, as an architect. So when it comes to food, you may think that it's a matter of uh, making dish and uh, eating, but uh, it has a great relationship, a significant relationship with the urbanization and the cities. Uh, food and beverage uh, industry is the biggest industry today in the world. Therefore, through the lens of food, we can uh, have another view of uh, the urbanization and the cities, architecture, and urban design. This, this is the mandate of uh, this project ongoing at uh, Harvard University. Architects have been highly interested in this. Uh, for instance, Frank Lloyd Wright uh, talked about, uh, uh, wrote in his master plan, uh, said that. Uh, uh, that he, he, we, we need to have a four acre uh, farmland in uh, the district. And uh, due to the e expansion of the urban uh, cities, uh, the f uh, f farm and the ur cities are closer to closer. This is a project uh, in China uh, in order to create a land space uh, enough to produce all the food uh, demands to meet the 100% food demands in Singapore. So the urbanization of uh, food production is an issue and a topic. This is a uh, project being conducted by a student, and he calculated the sun amounts of sunlight, the direction of sunlight in this space so that there is no shadow on the farm farmland. There are a lot of mechanisms in this project of that time. Land and ocean. This is interesting because in 2011, for the first time in the history, the uh, volume of uh, farmed fish exceeded that of uh, the production of beef. So that's the reason why on this map uh, the oceans and uh, uh, lands uh, have been uh, reversed. Uh, we used to think that the food production is on land, but now the uh, sea, ocean, uh, is increasingly <coughs> the uh, places of food production. This is Hainan in China. This might look a little bit too primitive, but uh, like it is similar to Tokyo Bay project of Mr. Tange in Tokyo. Uh, th this is connected to uh, farmland, and this is connected to uh, food, and this type of city can emerge over the ocean. This is another project conducted by a student. It's in the Gulf of Mexico. <coughs> There are a lot of uh, old, unused uh, oil or ec extraction rigs uh, formerly used by BP or other oil companies, and there are a lot of them in, in uh, remaining them. And around them, there is already an e ecosystem which have generated. So this student focused on it to uh, create this type of farm farming mechanism, farming equipment, it, which is vertical. It's like a skyscraper within a uh, city under the water to uh, produce fish. This is another concept of uh, uh, student. Uh, land grabbing uh, is a new type of exploitation, uh, which is uh, very much a problem currently. Uh, advanced countries, uh, inter inter industrialized countries are uh, buying a lot of lands aggressively in uh, continents like Africa in order to produce, make produce uh, food to import entirely that uh, to uh, for their own consumption. For instance, South Korea has already purchased more than half of the farmland in Madagascar. So this student uh, project is aiming at the changing legislation regarding this uh, land grabbing. This is a mapping of various grains, uh, how uh, the places where uh, we can produce grains will change uh, going forwards uh, due to climate changes. This was simulated over a very long span of time and by a student. And, and you can see uh, in these two places, only two places, there will be 100% good quality Farmland. This one of them is this Cascadia over a border between U.S. and Canada. It, it, it used to be the case that the conflicts or uh, the borders uh, between countries were determined by uh, the uh, resources such as oil and the coal, and now the food will be very much determining. Uh, 
to draw the border lines between the different countries. This, it, in the reality, there is an, a separate separatist movement for the independence of Cascade, Cascadia, actually. And uh, the uh, airports are uh, so much symbolic of the urban uh, lives. And uh, uh, this uh, student has come up with this design of a combination of airports and uh, farmlands. And as you can see, uh, these negative legacy of industries uh, exist in many numerous places all over the world, such as uh, uh, here to uh, extract uh, stones. And uh, there is another idea of uh, converting them into uh, uh, farms. This uh, has a depth of about 600 meters, and uh, you can have uh, different levels of uh, temperatures. So the deeper you uh, go down, the uh, lower the temperature, and the interesting ecosystem is being generated. So collaborating with engineers, we, uh, uh, the, the, this project is studying the possibility of creating a new type of cities, including food production con function. So the agri-urbanization is my forecast, the fusion, integration of food production, farmland, and the urban cities. This is an uh, ongoing uh, Harvard project, uh, Harvard University-based project. This is uh, uh, the Great Green Wall Initiative to stop uh, the Sahara uh, desert going further down in the south uh, in Africa. And in China, uh, against the expansion of uh, Gobi uh, desert, it has already been uh, this uh, wall which was built. But it is not interesting enough, perhaps we thought. And we focused on this uh, place uh, where is there is the biggest production of co co cocoa. And the chocolate is uh, the sweet, which is the most uh, eaten in the world in terms of the volume of consumption now. But in 20 years, the cocoa, due to the uh, scarcity of cocoa, scarcity of land of, to produce cocoa, the chocolate uh, it will be as expensive as gold. So in order to prevent uh, uh, it from happening, continuous m monument uh, is uh, the project in order to uh, build this smart wall. And Further, uh, this is in Hawaii. There is a lack of, there is a shortage of farmland, and this is the size of the Hawaii Islands. But this EEZ, Exclusive Economic Zone, is very large. So the idea here is to utilize this space over the ocean uh, to uh, cre create floating farms. Uh, thanks to the technologies that are available nowadays, it is now possible to build this type of smart floating farms. Uh, the uh, self-sufficiency of Hawaii for food consumption is only up about 10 percent, it can be improved by this type of project. And the mobility and the food is very interesting. This is the first shop, the first restaurant of Mac McDonald's. Uh, was hugely connected to the mobility by automobiles. And the drive through uh, used to be the typical implementation, but it is now changing. Uh, Amazon used to be distributing packs, Uber used to be distributing people. Both of them are now uh, much more focusing on distributing and delivery of the food. That means is that uh, it used to be the case for the human uh, people to go to get food. Now the food is coming to you. And in the reality amongst the uh, startups uh, today, many of the startups startups are doing a business focusing on food. And in New York, we have seen uh, a birth of an uh, uh, incubator, which by the name of Foodix, this is an incubator dedicatedly financing uh, the food startups. And in Manhattan, there is an a, a lot of difficulties to have an, uh, food, and uh, a food startup uh, is perhaps uh, providing solutions to them. So restaurants are coming to the consumers, are coming to you, and if it happens increasingly, the situation in um, urban cities will change a lot. Now, in terms of food planning, this is a canteen. Canteen uh, providing food in a workplace used to be a very socialistic idea, but this is a canteens at Google headquarters. Uh, so this is an, uh, at the top of uh, a summit of the capitalistic uh, implementation. This is a uh, uh, sort of irony. So food life uh, plus work, I wanted to come up with a system which nicely integrate both of them. Lastly, I would like to say a few words about a kitchen, which isn't very e most sophisticated place uh, in the house. It used to be just a simple 
space, one of the rooms uh, in uh, but it is now at the center of socializing in a home environment. When the kitchen becomes the, the center, what happens? Well, it is a kitchen, but uh, uh, it is ability to use this uh, central space only as a kitchen. So this is a mobile counter. Uh, you can use it either as a kitchen counter or a desk. Or, well, this is a an, an, uh, funny example. This is Electrolux, a Swedish home appliance company. Electrolux Chef, it, this is a new kit uh, that Electrolux is about to launch with this is a hologram chef comes to into your family to tell you how to cook with the chef's recipe this is a slogan this is a tagline of uh, this product but this person do you see do you think that he looks like a chef or he looks like a family member i, I don't think so that's that's a funny point and this is uh, what, what is uh, to be about to be tested in the studio this is a 3D printer which can mix a lot of uh, ingredients to uh, produce food. This is not the hand manual work. This is uh, a work being done uh, by this 3D printer. This is quite primitive and basic, so you may think that uh, you know, it is better to do that with your own hands. This is the result. It doesn't look tasty. But still, we can improve it in terms of shape and make it uh, look nicer or more tasty and uh, perhaps. Coming up. So, kitchen. As you can see here, in our prediction about the future, kitchen has been a, a lot of uh, discussion can focus on the uh, future. So this type of future kitchen, I would like to see that or not. I'm not sure. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.